this is Jennifer Payank with A Crocheted Simplicity. In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to crochet my On the Bias square afghan. For the sample, I used Lion Brand Yarns Pound of Love, but for video purposes, I'm going to use Lion Brand Yarns Woolies. The two yarns are very comparable. You'll also need a 6.5mm crochet hook, or whatever size you need to meet gauge, although this is an afghan and gauge isn't totally crucial. You'll need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle for weaving in your ends, and a tape measure or something you can use to measure your gauge. Go ahead and gather your materials, and I'll meet you back here for the beginning rows of the pattern. Before I begin a project, I always like to pull several yards of yarn from the ball or the skein that I'm working with. This really helps me to have an even tension as I'm crocheting any project. Go ahead and grab your yarn and make a slip knot on your hook. We're going to start with the beginning rows. For row one, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. This counts as the first double crochet and chain one space. We're going to work three double crochet into that first chain from your hook. I like to work into the back hump of the chain. We have one, two, and three double crochets. And we're going to chain one and work one last double crochet into that first chain. This completes row one. We have three chains here that are our first double crochet. We have a chain one here for our chain one space, three double crochets, a chain one space, and another double crochet. Now to begin row two, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four, and turn. We're gonna work three double crochets into that first chain one space. We're gonna chain one, skip the three double crochets from the previous row, and work three double crochets into the next chain one space. One, two, three, and chain one, and work one more double crochet into that last chain one space. That completes row two. For row three, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four, turn. We're gonna work three double crochets into that first chain one space. One, two, three. We're going to chain one, skip the next three double crochets, and work three double crochets into the next chain one space. One, two, three. Again, chain one, skip the next three double crochets, Work three double crochets into the last chain one space. One, two, three, chain one, and work one more double crochet into that last chain one space. And that completes row three. For row four, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four, and turn. I'm going to work three double crochets into that first chain one space. It's one, two, three, and chain one. Skip the next three double crochet. Work three double crochets into the next chain one space. One, two, three, chain one. Skip the next three double crochet, 
work three double crochets into the next chain one space, two, three, chain one again, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochet into that last chain one space, two, three, chain one, and end with one double crochet into that last chain one space. Here we have through row four. Now for row five, I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four, turn, work three double crochets into the first chain one space, one, two, three, chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochets in the next chain one space, two, three, chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochets into the next chain one space, two, three, chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochets into the next chain one space, three, chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one and work one more double crochet into that last chain one space. This completes row five and completes the beginning rows section. At this point, you can measure your gauge. Approximate size across the long edge, across the top of row five is six and a half inches. And then if you want to measure the height of the rows, I measured on it perpendicular to row five from row one. Now, you don't have to meet gauge because it is an afghan. So if you find that the yarn that you chose is a little stiff, go ahead and go up a hook size. If it's too floppy and you want your blanket a little stiffer, go down a hook size or two. Totally up to you. It's not a garment, so gauge isn't completely crucial. So now we're not gonna fasten off. We're gonna continue on in the pattern to the increase rows. The increase rows is where we're gonna repeat over and over and over until you get the afghan the size that you'd like. I'll go over that a little bit more in detail in a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some more yarn off of the skein I'm working with. Okay, so row one of the increase rows, we're gonna chain one, which I've already done, and turn. We're gonna work a single crochet into each stitch and chain one space across. So this row does not increase, even though it's in the increase row section. That's just where I needed it to be for the pattern to work out. Now I'm working into the and around that chain one, not working into the chain. You can work into it if you'd like, but for this particular project, I worked around it. When you get to the end of the row, remember our chain four counts as our first double crochet and chain one space. So we need to remember to work a single crochet into the chain one space and then work one into that top of the third chain. So we have one, two, three. For that one, I do work into the chain. And that's it for row one of the increase section. Now for row two, this is where you really need to make sure you have loose yarn laying next to you. 
because row two is a row of slip stitches. And when you're working directly from a ball or a skein, that can really affect and tighten your slip stitches. So for row two, we're gonna turn but not chain. And we're gonna work a slip stitch into each stitch across. To insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through both loops on your, sorry, I misspoke. So you insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop right through the loop on your hook. Try to do it in one fluid motion. When you're working your slip stitches, make sure that the loops from your slip stitches are the same size as the top loops of the stitch you're working into, or the, in this case, the single crochet. You don't want them to be smaller. If they're smaller, that means they're too tight and you'll end up cinching your work. So we're going to slip stitch in each stitch across. And this is going to be the right side of our afghan. Okay, now for row three of the increase rows, we're going to be working into the stitches from row one so we're gonna work into the top of those single crochet stitches, leaving the slip stitches alone. Those are for aesthetics only. We're gonna chain one and turn. And again, we're gonna work into the top of the single crochet from row one. So we're gonna work a single crochet into the first stitch Sometimes that first one is a little hard to get your hook into, use the point knit edge. Now this is an increase row, so we're gonna chain one and work a single crochet into the next stitch. Then we're gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. We're gonna repeat this across till we get to the last two stitches. When we get to the last two stitches, we're going to single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, and single crochet into the last stitch. This is where we get our increase by working the chain one with no stitch skipped in between the first and the last two single crochet. So that completes row three. We're going to chain one and turn. And now we're going to work just into the stitches from row three. So for rows, rows four through ten, I'm not going to show them all in camera because they're the same. We work a single crochet into the first stitch, chain one, single crochet into the first chain one space, chain one, single skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next chain one space, and we're gonna repeat that across until you get to the last two stitches, which in this case is gonna be a chain one space and a single crochet. We're gonna work a single crochet into that chain one space, chain one, and work a single crochet into the last stitch. That completes row four. So go ahead and complete rows five through 10 
and I'll meet you back here to work row 11 of the increase rows. Once you've completed the increase rows through row 10, this is what your work should look like. An easy way to count to make sure you've completed 10 rows is there's one, two, the slip stitch row is row two, then count the rows of single crochet chain one. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to work row 11, chain one in turn. We're going to single crochet into each stitch and chain one space across. That completes row 11. Now we're going to turn, but do not chain one because we have another row of slip stitch in each stitch across. And that's the end of row 12. Now we're going to work another section of granny stitches, still in an increase section. We're going to begin by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Again, this counts as our first double crochet and chain one space. We're going to skip that first stitch where the chain four is. We're going to work three double crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to work into the stitches from row 11, so the top of the single crochet from row 11, not into the slip stitches we just worked. Skip that first stitch, work three double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip three stitches, one, two, three, work three double crochet, into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and three double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to repeat that across. Chain one, skip the next three stitches, three double crochet into the next stitch. So repeat this pattern stitch across till you have two stitches remaining.
Now we have two stitches remaining. We're going to work three double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one and one double crochet into that last stitch. And that completes row 13. Now for rows 14 through 16, they're exactly the same. So we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four, turn. We're gonna work three double crochets into the first chain one space. Chain one, skip the next three double crochet and work three double crochets into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochet into the next chain one space. We're gonna repeat this all the way across to the last chain one space. Okay, we've made it all the way across to the last chain one space. We're gonna work three double crochet, chain one, and one double crochet into that last chain one space. So there's three double crochet, chain one, and one more double crochet into that last chain one space. And that's the end of row 14. Now we're going to complete rows 15 and 16. Go ahead and complete rows 15 and 16 and I'll meet you back. Here I've completed rows 1 through 16 of the increase section. At this point, to increase the size of your afghan, all you're going to do is simply repeat rows 1 through 16 of the increase section. So you're going to repeat from here to here. You're going to repeat that until your blanket is as wide as you'd like it. To measure for the width of your blanket, have it so the right side is facing up and your tail of yarn to your right where you started. And you're going to measure along the bottom edge. So right now my blanket would roughly be 10 and a half inches. So I'm going to continue to repeat increase rows 1 through 16 until my blanket is as wide as I want it. Once you've gotten the width of your blanket, we're going to go ahead and work the transition rows. The transition rows are the two rows between the increase rows and the decrease rows for the square afghan. So I'm going to pretend that I'm ready to work my transition rows because my afghan is as wide as I'd like it to be. Transition row number one, 
we're going to chain one and turn and work a single crochet into each stitch and chain one space across. Now remember when you get to the end of the row you've got a chain one space and a double crochet. So work a single crochet into the chain one space and then work your last single crochet into the top of the chain three. And that completes transition row number one. For transition row number two we're going to turn without chaining and work a slip stitch and each stitch across. So go ahead and make sure you have enough yarn pulled from your skein so that you don't have any tension on your slip stitches. And work a slip stitch and each stitch across. And that completes transition row number two. Now we're ready to move on to our decrease rows. For decrease row number one, we're going to be working into transition row number one. So the top of those single crochets, just like we worked the first row after any of the other slip stitch rows. We're going to chain one and turn. Now that we're decreasing, we're going to work a single crochet, two together, in the first and the second stitches. Okay, so we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the second stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook to make one single crochet, two together. Now we're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that across all the way until you get to the last two stitches of the row. Now that we've gotten to the last two stitches of the row, we're going to work a single crochet, two together, in those last two stitches. And that completes decrease row number one. Now for decrease rows two through eight, they're identical. We're going to chain one and turn. We're going to work a single crochet two together into the first stitch and first chain one space. Work a single crochet two together, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch. We're going to repeat that all the way across until you get to the last chain one space and last stitch. And we've come to the last chain one space and stitch. We're going to work a single crochet two together in that last chain one space and last stitch. And that completes row two. So go ahead and complete rows three through eight. They're worked identical to the row we just completed. And then I'll meet you back here for row nine. After you complete rows one through eight of the decrease rows, you can really see how our afghan is now becoming a square. So now we're going to complete row nine of the decrease row. We're going to chain one and turn. Work a single crochet two together in the first stitch and chain one space. 
Now we're gonna work a single crochet in each stitch and chain one space across to the last two stitches. The last two stitches being the last chain one space and single crochet. Okay, now we're at the last chain one space and stitch. Work a single crochet two together in the last two stitches. That completes row nine. Now for decrease row 10, we're gonna turn without chaining and work a slip stitch in each stitch across. And that completes decrease row number 10. For decrease row number 11, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. Again, it counts as our first double crochet and chain one space. We're gonna work into the stitches from row nine. We're gonna skip the first four, including the one where the chain four is worked. So we skip one, two, three, four, work three double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip each of the next three stitches, work three double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip each of the next three, work three double crochet into the next stitch. We're gonna repeat this across until you get to the last stitch. And we're going to work one double crochet into the last stitch. That completes decrease row 11. 
Now decreases rows 12 through 14 are the same. We're going to chain 4, turn. We're going to skip the first chain 1 space and first 3 double crochet. We're going to work 3 double crochet into the next chain 1 space. Chain one, skip the next three double crochet, work three double crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next three stitches, work three double crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next three stitches, three double crochet into the next chain one space. We're going to repeat that across until you get to the last chain one space. And the last chain one space is right here. Remember there's that chain four, which is one double crochet and a chain one space. So we're gonna work one double crochet into that chain one space. And that finishes off a decrease row 12. Go ahead and repeat that for decrease rows 13 and 14. And I'll meet you back and we'll work decrease row 15 and 16. Now that we've worked decrease rows 1 through 14, we're going to finish up our first decrease row sections by working rows 15 and 16. We're going to chain one and turn. We're going to work a single crochet into each stitch and chain one space across. Don't forget that when you get to the end of the row, you've got a chain one space and a double crochet that was the chain four from the previous row. So for our last two stitches, we work one in the chain one space and one in the top of the chain three. completes row 15 and for row 16 we're going to turn but do not chain and work a slip stitch in each stitch across. That completes one section of decrease rows. Decrease rows 1 through 16. You're going to go ahead and repeat decrease rows 1 through 16 until you get to where you have row 14 repeat and you only have 23 stitches remaining. You'll work one decrease row section for each increase row section you've worked. In my case, I worked one increase row section. So I worked one decrease row section. Now, go ahead and complete your decrease row section by repeating rows 1 through 16. And I'll meet you back here to work the ending rows when you get to a row 14 repeat with only 23 stitches left. This is what your work should look like when you get to the end of a decrease row 14 repeat and you only have 23 stitches remaining. 
Now remember, you've got a chain four, which is two stitches, your first double crochet and chain one space. And then at the end, you've got a chain one space and a double crochet. Don't forget to count those as stitches. Now, in my case, since I'm making a small swatch for the video, I had to remove decrease rows 15 and 16 because my row 14, my first row 14, already had 23 stitches. So I removed those to show you how to work the ending rows. For ending row one, we're gonna chain one and turn. And we're gonna work a single crochet, two together, and the first stitch and chain one space. So we're gonna decrease. Then we're gonna work a single crochet and each stitch across until we get to the last chain one space and stitch. We single crochet in each stitch, and chain one space across till we get to the last two stitches. Our last two stitches are that chain four. There's a chain one space and a oh, double crochet. So we're gonna work a single crochet two together in the chain one space and the top of the chain three. And that completes ending row one. We're gonna turn, do not chain, and we're going to work a slip stitch in each stitch across. And now you should have 21 stitches at the end of ending row one and ending row two. Okay, now for ending row three, we're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna work into the stitches from ending row one. So work into those single crochets. We're gonna work a single crochet two together. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat across until you get to the last two stitches. Now we've got the last two stitches, work a single crochet, two together. And that's ending row three. Now for ending rows four through 10, we're gonna chain one and turn. Single crochet, two together in the first stitch and the first chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next. Repeat across until you get to that last chain one space and last stitch. And we're gonna single crochet two together in the last chain one space and last stitch. We're gonna repeat for rows five through 10. You can go ahead and repeat rows five through 10 and I'll meet you back for row 11.
Now at the end of row 10, you have five stitches remaining. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna work rows 11 and 12, chain one and turn, single crochet in the first stitch, and next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet two together, in the next chain one space, and last stitch. Now at the end of ending row 10, we have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna chain one and turn to begin ending row 11. Work a single crochet decrease in the first stitch and chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch. Work another single crochet decrease or single crochet two together in the next chain one space and last stitch. Now we have three stitches remaining. One, two, three chain one and turn, and we're gonna work ending row 12, which is the last row. Work a single crochet two together in the first and the last stitch, skipping over the chain one space. And that's it. That finishes up your afghan. Now the only thing left to do is add a border if you'd like. I'm going to show you how I work the border, how I begin it. So I'm going to continue off the last ending row. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to rotate my work to work into the sides of the rows. Okay, I'm going to work one single crochet into the side of each single crochet row one single crochet into the single crochet slip stitch row. And then I'm gonna work three single crochets into the side of each double crochet row. I like to work in the middle of the stitches when at all possible, it helps to prevent little gaps. So I just insert my hook right in the middle of a stitch. And when you get to the rows where you had a row of single crochet with slip stitch across, I insert my hook into that last slip stitch and then into that single crochet. Then for the three single crochets along each double crochet row, Work three single crochet into the side of each double crochet. Again, insert your hook into the middle of the stitch. You can work around them if you'd like. I just prefer to work into the stitch. I think it leaves a nice cleaner edge. When you get to the chains, you can work around the chains if you'd like, like this. Or work into each individual chain. It's totally up to you, whatever you prefer, whatever you think looks better. When I have an actual double crochet at the end, I like to work into it. But then when I work into the side of the chain, it doesn't look so bad if it's just the chain you're working around. Then you come to the next section where there's a single crochet and a slip stitch row together. Insert your hook into the next slip stitch and then through the single crochet and work a single crochet. And then here we are, the sides of the single crochet rows. Work one single crochet into each 
single crochet. Now if your edges start to become wavy, you can do a couple different things. If it's wavy, you've got too many stitches or you need to go down a hook size. You can adjust with either one. Stitch count isn't crucial. The most important part is that you just have a nice, neat edge. So we're going to continue all the way down to the corner and then we're going to work three single crochet into the corner. You can also work a single crochet, chain one single crochet if you prefer. It's totally up to you. This is just what I did. Then rotate and repeat along the other edge. And once you repeat along all four sides, join with a slip stitch to your first single crochet and fasten off and weave in your ends. Or you can continue adding rows to the border if you'd like more than just a simple edge. Just work one single crochet into each stitch and three in each corner. And that's it. After you've completed your edging or border, if you'd like a thicker border, then your afghan is complete. Fasten off, weave in your ends, block it if you need to or if you prefer to, and then you're all set. I hope you've really enjoyed this pattern and this video tutorial, and I hope that you'll meet me back on my blog for more great patterns and video tutor tutorials in the future. Once you've completed your project, I'd love to see them. Share them with us in the Facebook community group. It's A Crochet Simplicity Crochet Community. Or share them with me on social media using the hashtag A Crochet Simplicity. Or find me on Instagram. I'd love to see your projects. Thanks for watching and have a great day.